I've got more circuit wisdom for you here and it might earn you $150 an hour. This is how you turn on an entire circuit with just an electric field, no current. In an earlier video, we talked about having a microcontroller and turning on an LED through a transistor. This is an NPN BJT. There is a different type of switch we can use and it's called a FET. FET stands for field effect transistor. And the way you draw this is we're going to eliminate our resistor there because all we need is the electric field going over to a gate. So the symbol actually looks like a capacitor. This bottom leg usually has an arrow on it, like that. And this happens to be called the source. This is the gate, and this is the drain. This is called a FET. And that stands for Field Effect Transistor, AKA MOSFET. FET or MOSFET has a gate, and there is no current that flows between those. It's just a capacitance. There is a gate capacitance. So the way this works, again, is your ESP32, for example, whatever microcontroller is going to give it a pulse relative to ground, that is going to put an electric field on the gate. If the field on that gate is greater than the voltage in the data sheet for this part, called VGS, which is the gate to source voltage, then this will turn on, turning on the rest of your circuit. Now let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of using a FET instead of a BJT. The good is that you do not need current to turn this device on. You can just do it with a field. So you could turn on like a thousand of these with one output from a microcontroller. The bad is that FETs are very ESD sensitive. So electrostatic discharge, you could damage the part just handling it. So you need to be very well grounded using a static mat. The other bad thing about a FET is that if this gate is left floating, so if your microcontroller is like in a tri-state or it's just unconnected, this will float around. It'll grab whatever field is near it. So it might turn on, might turn off, might go somewhere in between. That brings us to the ugly. There's some other components we have to add to this circuit to make this a little bit more reliable. We're gonna play it safe and add a pull down resistor here to ground. What that's gonna do is make sure that this gate doesn't float around and accidentally turn on. Yes, there's a little bit of wasted current there because now our microcontroller has to go through this resistor to ground, but we can usually use a high value, like 100K, or if you're feeling really wild, you can use like a mag. The higher you make that resistor, the more susceptible this circuit is to electrical noise causing the gate to turn on when the microcontroller is not in a known state. Last thing on the ugly list here. This FET, if you're driving an inductive load like a motor or something that's gonna have inductance and shoot a very high voltage back at you when you switch it, we have to have a diode that allows that negative voltage to shoot up from ground. The way they usually do this is there's just simply a diode here that goes up like that. A lot of times this diode is already integrated into the FET itself. So you'll see that in the symbol. You have to look at the data sheet to know if it's there or not. And sometimes it makes sense to just put a bigger one, big, huge old diode on there anyway to protect it even more. That's three minutes. Like and follow for more. Adios.